Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Friday the 5th of February 2021. And yesterday we reported that gold fell quite heavily and below the psychologically important level of $1,800. Today it's holding just above that figure. And we look as to the reason why and perhaps more importantly what's going to happen this afternoon which could affect its direction for the next week or so. So let's take a look. Yes, indeed. Yesterday we produced a video entitled Why Gold Prices Sliced Below 1800 Today, where we highlighted the reasons that despite what was happening in the silver market, the gold market was also falling back, primarily for reasons of its own, though not conclusively just for its own. Much of it centered around relatively strong economic data, plus a strengthening of the US dollar. And so far, good jobs reports, which were likely to continue today with the announcement, which is due shortly, of the US non-farm payrolls report. Now we ended yesterday's video with the statement Our suspicion for the moment is that gold will flirt just above or just below $1,800 until more solid reporting is announced and also if there is any further comment on the Biden stimulus plan progress. Unquote. Well, as at 12.50 GMT, gold is currently $1,802 and has, as we suggested yesterday, flirted around the 1800 figure level, being at some point just below and at others just above. We have also seen two commentaries this morning, one around the jobs report and one concerning the Biden proposed stimulus package. Let's take a look at these because they are quite short, or at least the part that we've excerpted is quite short, but very relevant. Reuters article dated February 5th, 2020, updated at 7.41 GMT. US employment growth likely rebounded, more government money still needed. US jobs growth likely rebounded in January as authorities began easing COVID-19 restrictions on businesses with the ebbing pace of infections, which could offer the strongest signal yet that the worst of the labour market turmoil was behind after the economy shed jobs in December. The Labour Department's closely watched employment report on Friday will, however, not lessen the need for additional relief money from the government, with millions of people experiencing long bouts of unemployment and others having permanently lost their jobs and giving up the search for work. The economy would still be about 10 million jobs short from the labour market's peak in February 2020. President Joe Biden is pushing the US Congress to pass a $1.9 trillion recovery plan, which has been met with resistance from mostly Republican lawmakers now worried about the swelling national debt. Biden's fellow Democrats in the Senate were on Thursday set to take a first step towards the ultimate passage of the proposed stimulus package. The stimulus has to pass, said Jason Reed, finance professor at the University of Notre Dame's Mendoza College of Business. Whatever the payroll's number is, we shouldn't forget we're significantly under the amount of jobs needed to get back to where we were a year ago. The survey of establishments is likely to show that non-farm payrolls increased by 50,000 jobs last month after declining by 140,000 in December, according to a Reuters survey of economists. December's drop was the first in eight months and came amid renewed restrictions on businesses like restaurant and bars to slow a resurgence in coronavirus infections. The pace of COVID-19 infections appeared to have peaked in early January, a trend that could also give a lift to hiring in the months ahead, should it hold. The economy has recouped 12.5 million of the 22.2 million jobs lost in March and April. The Congressional Budget Office estimated on Monday that employment would not return to its pre-pandemic level before 2024. Bloomberg article dated February 5th, 2020, 10.35am GMT, 
updated 1056. Headline, Senate adopts blueprint for stimulus as Harris breaks tie. The Senate voted 51 to 50 after Pre Vice President Kamala Harris broke her first tie to adopt a budget blueprint for President Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion virus relief package following nearly 15 hours of wading through amendments from both parties. The House had already adopted its budget resolution but will likely have to vote again Friday to agree on the Senate's language. Once that's done, Democrats will be able to craft a relief bill in the coming weeks that can pass without any Republican votes under special budget rules. Though the White House, moderates like the Democratic Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia and others still say they want a bipartisan final product. Budget Chairman Bernie Saunders said adoption means help is on the way to those suffering from an economic collapse. Tonight we can say to them we understand the pain that they are experiencing and we are going to do something about it, Saunders said. House and Senate committees would have until February the 16th to write the stimulus legislation under the instructions in the budget. The final action early Friday followed an all-night marathon of votes on amendments known as a Votorama. Most of the non-binding measures were intended more to make points on hot-button issues like taxes, abortion, immigration and schools that had little or sometimes nothing to do with the pandemic aid. There were 41 roll-call votes during the process. Democrats mostly held together to beat back the Republican amendments, but on several issues, centrist Democrats displayed their clout in the 50-50 Senate and delivered a message to Biden and progressives that they won't get everything on their wish list. This was a giant first step, Majority Leader Charles Schumer said, noting the vote came exactly one month after two new Democrats were elected in Georgia, handing the majority to his party. End of article. So as we can see, that these two factors make, in the end, counteract one another to some degree, but the first stage of the Biden proposal passing has hit the US dollar this morning, with the dollar index currently down 0.12 at 91.40, though it has been lower at 91.33, having fallen, in fact, from as high as 91.60. This obviously has allowed gold and silver prices to rise, at least for the moment, before the jobs report is announced. After that, we shall gain a clearer picture of where analysts and investors suspect the prices will move towards. Of course, any strengthening of economic data will likely, at least short term, adversely affect the gold price, providing, of course, that strength is greater than what is now built in to market expectations. And, of course, quite possibly, the opposite could occur in the event that the figures are worse than anticipated. Meanwhile, equities in the UK and Europe are up today, from between 0.3% to 1%, following Wall Street's rise yesterday of around 1% on average across the indices, and Asia-Pacific markets closing broadly up 1% to 1.5% overnight. Now, we shall, of course, be providing our weekly update tomorrow, as usual, and we'll be able to give a more detailed account of where we see prices heading into next week and hopefully throughout the month of February. So do watch out for those employment figures today and if you're unable to then tune in or even if you are able to tune in to us tomorrow as we will cover them. Now finally last Sunday we were supposed to publish our Bitcoin versus gold and silver episode 9 but the silver squeeze or proposed silver squeeze Reddit Robin Hood fiasco took priority. But earlier today we have in fact published that video in light of asking also whether Bitcoin could potentially be the next target. And we've stipulated those who suspect that it could be and why we suspect it may not happen or may not be as successful as some envisage. Worth a look potentially. Now we've placed links to both the gold and Bitcoin videos below and we'll also place them in the comments section. Now that's broadly it for now. Do share your thoughts 
And also, in case you missed it because we produced two videos yesterday, we published why the silver short squeeze is over, but premiums will remain high. And those of you who are currently thinking, potentially, of buying physical silver at the moment or in the very near future, you may hopefully find that video useful. Meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel, not forgetting to press the bell sign so you're notified of our videos as and when they are published. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.